All right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, take a, a, a little break, a short break away from uh, the news of the day. By the way, um, still no agreement, obviously. Uh, the uh, Republicans met at the White House yesterday with uh, the president. I think there were 17 uh, uh, members of the House uh, at that meeting. Um, when I was driving home yesterday, it came over on CNN and it came over on, uh, on uh, the New York Times that uh, the president rejected the overture made by John Boehner and the Republicans uh, to, uh, to uh, fund the government, or should I say raise the debt ceiling for another uh, six weeks and negotiate other issues, keeping the government closed. Uh, but the comments made afterwards, at least by the Republicans at the meeting, Eric Cantor and others, said that, uh, you know, the, the, the president listened, didn't say yes or no, and uh, they're meeting again today. So that, that's where we are, although I wouldn't hold my breath. All right, uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is um, Stephen Casey, Chief Counsel for the Texas Center for Defense of Life. And um, this is a bizarre case, and you might have seen um, uh, Bill O'Reilly talk about it uh, yesterday. Um, they're, they're, his group is suing a Texas judge who ordered a 15-year-old girl to uh, keep living with her grandmother, even though she claimed the woman's convicted sex offender boyfriend was making aggressive advances towards her and... The couple was trying to convince this 15-year-old girl to terminate her pregnancy. So joining us now is Stephen Casey. Hey, Stephen, how are you? I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for, for um, bringing us on your show. Well, I think this is a very interesting case and a very important case. So, so I mean, I, I, I had the basics correct, right? Yeah, you do have the basics correct. The, uh, it gets a little bit more, I would say, crazy or outrageous when you, you take into consideration that the grandmother was a former uh, it was a non-biologically related grandmother. She was actually her ex-step-grandmother. Her natural grandfather and this woman had since divorced, and so there was no reason for her to stay in this house whatsoever. And, and the judge failed in his first duty, which was to protect her. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he would send her back. And then six months after this ruling that sent her back, uh, the sex offender— um, the the, the the grandmother's boyfriend shot and killed the grandmother and wound up sexually assaulting your client. Oh yes, it, it was it was crazy, and you know there was a last line of defense, and there were war- It's not like there weren't warning flags, right? Because in in the, in the fall of 2011, this girl had gone to three school teachers who were also included in this lawsuit: her, her English teacher, the vice principal, and principal of her school, and she had said. Uh, she had an assignment to write a story about something, the, the best thing that had ever happened to her or the worst thing that had ever happened to her. And she approached the teacher and said, can I write about something that's happening right now? And the teacher said, just change the names, and yes, you can. And so the girl wrote a story of being sexually assaulted. It was very clear to the teachers that it was going on, and they didn't report it to the authorities. And as a matter of fact, to add insult to injury, they made her, her, they told the story, unbeknownst to her, to her grandmother and the sex offender, and she was made to go back and apologize to the school teachers for making up such a lie. I mean, it just, it, it boggles your mind. And so then we go to court. So that was the first line of defense that fell. The school teachers could, could have reported the sexual assault. And then she goes and she has a private conversation with the judge for 20 to 30 minutes and telling him, look, oh, there's all this pressure out in the courtroom. I really do want to go and live with my biological mom, but they're pressuring me to have this abortion, and I'm being propositioned and asked to strip my clothes off by the sex offender regularly, and the judge still did nothing and failed. Right, well, well, why, yeah, okay, so why did this judge um, decide not to send back, or what was his stated reason, if there was one, not to grant custody or not to let the girl go back to her biological mother? You, you represented the mother. The mother wanted the daughter. The daughter wanted to go. Why on earth would they, they, the judge decide to leave her in this uh, you know, precarious situation is putting it mildly? Well, two things. The first answer for the first part of your question is he said, I find no reason to remove her out of this home, which to me was the most shocking thing. We found out later, we didn't even know the substance of her conversation with the judge at that time. We didn't find it out till six months after she had been assaulted and had some time to recover, and we talked to her. There's some other uh, evidence out there not yet confirmed that he may have been friends with these people. The, ju- done- the judge might have been friends with the grandmother and the sex offender. 
Yeah, with, with the sex offender and the biological grandfather. Yeah. Oh, and okay. we're, we're finding some and more information about that out. And, you know, once that's conclusively identified, it goes even further to show that he was just, I mean, even in the conversation, the girl says, and when she described her conversation with the judge, he keeps asking her, are you sure? Are you sure? And I just think, you know, let's, let's assume for, you know, for the sake of argument, we don't know anything about the conversation she had with the judge. There's no one in their right mind that would put a girl back in the home with a registered sex offender who was registered for having done prison time because he was he, he was commit, convicted of indecency with a 13 year old. It, it is it is unbelievable and outrageous. All right, Stephen, we have a minute left. Tell me uh, what where is she now and what are you su- what are you uh, suing for? Well, she's safe right now, uh, undisclosed location because we want to keep her her identity protected. But right now we're suing for damages. This girl needs to have no worries for the rest of her life because she has been through a nightmare. And these people who dropped the ball, they had a special relationship with her. And tort law is based on that. If, I, I, if you have a duty to protect me, then, then, then when you drop on that duty and you breach that duty, you owe me. So you're, 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 suing, this, you're suing this judge in the state, correct? And we're suing the judge, and we're suing the um, the three school officials. Okay, and uh, and and she. When you say she's in an undisclosed location, I mean, who's is she with her mother? I mean, is she who she she's with? She's with family. Family. She's okay. With family okay. right okay. now. Okay. She's good. With family, biologically related family, who's who are out there to look out for her best interests because the judge and these three. And is that official custody? I mean, does someone have official custody of her yet? Yep. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Good. Yeah, All right. Do. Listen, Stephen. Good luck with this, and let us know what happened. Okay. All right, Steve. Thanks for taking me your show. I appreciate my, it. My pleasure, Stephen Casey, Chief Counsel for the Texas Center for Defense of Life. This is uh, uh, this uh, for a judge to do what he did is is, in my opinion, just outrageously nuts. And let's hope these people win their lawsuit. We're coming back, Doctor Samadi, Steve Malsberg Show, Newsmax TV and Radio.